guys welcome back to the sculpture today we're going to start a brand new sculpture and it's going to be a horse and i'm doing a slight copy from isadora bonher's horse the anatomy of the horse he is probably one of my favorite 19th century sculptors but the idea is that i'm going to be making a real horse instead of a flayed horse with just muscles and i'm using the clay that i've used prior uh, and it's the waste clay really that I have and I'm starting out with grog clay so the grog clay is going to help you fire this uh, piece before and I am adding the the base kind of slowly because the uh, clay the remaining clay that I have is kind of hard so I'm wetting it as I am putting it on the idea is to go very slowly and add the clay that way you don't create any air bubbles and I use a nice aluminum tool to kind of scrape it all off and level it I'm not trying to create a perfect sculpture but I am trying to just kind of use up this old clay that I have so this might look odd putting a stump in the middle but that's going to support my horse and you could put a whole lot more clay there because you need something to support the horse. Notice that I am not using an armature. And that could be a very bad thing if you don't know how to like engineer it. So the problem here is that the horse, the body of the horse is very heavy, especially with clay. The whole torso is going to be very heavy. So you have to make sure you get your proportions right. And what tends to happen is that the the heaviness of the horse starts pushing down on that middle part because the middle part is just there to support. I'm not even sure if I'm going to fire it with that because it is very handy to have that so you can hollow it out because you can kind of like dig a hole up into the chest from that hole. But I'm not sure I'm going to do that. And also keep in mind that the tiny little hoofs that the horse has for them on a uh, clay platform could potentially break it's uh, it's kind of amazing even when you do a human figure just thinking about the two little feet on the ground supporting all of this weight is kind of amazing so these might not look like legs yet but I'm just trying to connect the clay to the base because you want it to be nice and wet so it does stick to the base right away and even though this is not perfect, I mean, it definitely looks like a prehistoric sculpture that I'm working on. If I had an armature with wire inside, it would be much easier to get like a proportion and the ability of kind of moving it around. But I'm not making a mold. I'm not doing anything from this. So this is going to go directly into the kiln. So I am trying to be a little bit more careful. And the idea here is now just to kind of build it slowly. You can see how thick that torso is becoming and that is the rest of the clay that I have that's all I have I had 50 pounds of clay that I bought and it's pretty much all gone so I'm trying to make the legs I usually do this I make the legs much thicker because I just want the ability of supporting up the clay and here I am kind of like just pushing it up because it's sinking on you quite a bit so if it's sinking on you try to add more clay to that structure support in the middle or the legs don't worry about making the legs too thick because we'll be able to cut them and as the clay dries you should be able to remove a lot of the clay from the legs but I probably want to remove the stump in the middle until the very end One of my favorite tools is this it's just a paint scraper that you get at Home Depot and if you're working on portraits it's nice to create that geometric very flat edge I think a lot of people when they begin they kind of curve things too much so with this this paint scraper and you need a little bit of a harder metal because if it's too flimsy it just makes it like too difficult to to use for clay it's great for patching up walls but not great for sculpture so something a little bit stiffer lets you push in the clay and even this tool that I'm currently using, it's like a flat wooden tool. I like the geometric aspect of it because you can see I'm just kind of like cutting off parts of it. And it's very easy to create a geometric shape just using these flat tools. Later on, that's when I start to switch to round tools. But for now, I 
definitely prefer the flatness. So I'm done struggling trying to keep this up. So I'm going to make a very basic armature to support the clay. All I have is a flange from Home Depot, a pipe from Home Depot, and another pipe. This way, this is going to support the, the horse while I work on it until it dries up enough. And I've done this in several other sculptures that I've done. I did one of Veriatu, which was a, you know, a freestanding, very large uh, figure sculpture. And I used this sort of system. And you can kind of just like stab it right in the chest or whatever. If my platform was a little bit bigger, I should be able to put the arm much further away so it's not in the way. But the problem with that pipe is very close to the horse, so I'm kind of, that is one of the big mistakes I made starting the sculpture, is not having a platform large enough to accommodate the horse. You can see the platform is the same size as the base, the wooden base. Terrible idea. So if you're watching this, if you reach this part of the video, get a bigger platform than you need and you can kind of slice things down. My idea was to make the horse just a little bit smaller, but I think I'm going to stick to this size. So with the air crochets, you can see the muscles of the horse. There's been a, several artists in the past that have done air crochets. Houdon famously did the most famous human air crochet, which is a dissection and a flayed human body. So at this point, I'm using a round tool. This is probably one of my favorite tools because it creates the, the roundness, the concave part of the human body and animal. So you kind of want to do this a lot. And if you stick to these basic tools, I think your sculpture becomes a little bit better. You know, don't try and create these very fine detailed things at first anyway but if you stick to very basic tools i think your sculpture becomes better one of the things that antique sculptures have is that they make things simpler than they are but i think with today's sculpture tools that we have we have too many i think the best thing is really just limit yourself to a few and don't go out of your way to make tons of tools so the left leg or the foot of the horse kind of sticks out. So I'm putting a stick in there. The stick lets me, if I'm doing like a stretched arm, for example, I'll put like a stick there and it'll kind of help me build it without the arm falling off. Same thing with a horse. If you use these shish kebab sticks for food, uh, chopsticks are a little bit too thick. And this way I can kind of just hold that stick in there and create the pose for the horse. So that foot is going to be there. I'm going to keep it there until it just dries just a little bit more and then remove it. Now the thing that's important to note is when it dries too much, there's going to be a hole in that leg that you're going to have to kind of like push and get rid of. That is why you want to hollow out everything. You just want to be able to connect everything. So if you leave it to the last minute, for example, and then you remove the main part of the chest, it's already connected because the hole is already there. So you can kind of do that later as well instead of pushing down the clay and removing a lot of the detail. So at this point, we're just adding the muscles of the neck. Because the horse is twisting, there's a lot of things going on. You can see I'm definitely indicating where the muscles are. The muscles of horses are exactly the same name as humans. Like, so they have pectoralis, they have gluteus, they have serratus. If you understand human anatomy, you will understand horse anatomy. And horse anatomy and horse sculpture was probably the second most important type of sculpture that we have had ever had, especially the pre 19th century, because every warrior, every king rode a horse. So that was a very popular thing. So that's why we have so many sculptures of kings on horsebacks because the equine sculpture is something that not a lot of sculptors do these days because learning horse anatomy is really something that people don't do. 
but now with video game artists, you're seeing quite a bit more artists learning uh, animal anatomy. So with this tool, this is a uh, self-made tool, by the way, with the edges, I can kind of remove a lot of the detail. And here I am again, putting a stick for the head, the head of the horse kind of like is going to be looking down and I'm going to build it really slowly. I might even let it dry overnight. And another thing that I've never done or showed you guys is that you can cut parts of the horse even towards later and fire them in two or three pieces and glue them afterwards. That way you're going to be guaranteed a sculpture that's going to be not going to be blowing up except sometimes things dry at different rates and then you might have something of different sizes. So the neck you can see the horse is starting to take some shape. The legs are very thick, but they're very thick for a reason because I want to be able to support the weight of the sculpture. You know, you're looking at it, you might not realize how heavy it is, but it is quite heavy. And when I start to get a little bit more detail, I'll switch my tools as you can tell. So I'm using a silicone tool and I'm really just trying to draw in shapes. I don't think I'm quite ready for the silicone tool, but I like using the wooden tools for details. The silicone, silicone tool later on as I try and work more details in there. But the wooden tools I think work much better at this point. But I kind of go back and forth. I really just want to create an impression of the horse but it's starting to materialize and for a first session, it's not bad. I kind of messed up with the armature in the beginning, but it's moving along fairly well. So if you have any questions, post up in the comments below guys. And that is the first session for the horse and I'll post up the rest later on. Thanks for watching.